This podcast is part of the Zeo to Hero Podcast Network. You stay right here. The world is very lucky to have you, and so am I. May the power protect you always. We heard the voices. We can hear them. We can touch them. We're going to find out who they really are. Well, now that's a terrible idea. I'm going to do that one more time because I felt like I sloshed it. I've heard rumors of this year for superhero, what their plan is for like a never before photo op has ever that's going to happen. And dude, you might pay the monies, you know, I'm, I'm letting you know now, like, no, I, I can almost guarantee that this photo op does not exist anywhere. And what the rumor Ooh. I heard of what this year was, oh my God, dude, like just... <laughs> Uh, thanks again for joining this episode of Zeo to Hero, where I'm Billy, and Jim's out today. He says he's got COVID, but I think it's a cover story because I think somebody challenged his hide-and-seek skills. Well, <laughs> he's 32 years running champ for hide-and-seek for being the Yeti, so we'll see if it if he changes or if he retains his title. I don't know why I said a wrestling, wrestling reference, but that seemed legit. Oh, Anyways, ton- <laughs> yeah, tonight we have an honorary co-host. From Legacy and Nerd, we have Daniel here tonight. Thank you, Daniel, for joining me for like such a short notice. I know I told you last week, but uh, thanks, <laughs> well, thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me on again, man. I appreciate yeah. it. It was a long time coming. I know that we're cycling through some of our old guests that was were uh, some of our older guests, so we're starting to cycle through. And I was like, we got to have Daniel. We had more phenomenal last week. We have to have another mm-hmm. Power Ranger one. So right, it only makes sense. It's not like you're like have a powered your podcast, right? <laughs> I feel personally attacked. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dan, I know it's how's it been going for you? I know that you've been pumping a lot of uh, new video, new content, and uh, I actually got to I actually got to meet you at Retromania, yeah. and yeah. I got to see I got to see your cosplay team, and one yeah. of them I was looking, I was like, wait, hold on, he looks familiar, and then sure enough, I follow him on TikTok and. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Which one? Do you remember which uh, one it was? It was the uh, Wolf Ranger, the purple. Okay. A- Andrew, yeah. who's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was like sitting, I was like, wait a minute, hold on. I think I know him. <laughs> See him. Yeah. That's the good thing about like, even it kind of this community is, you know, I know you're kind of live close by to me as well. So, mm-hmm. it, you know, the TikTok people will kind of ma- meet us in the middle somewhere. So, you know, a lot of us follow each other because we're in the same general area, you know, but like, he's super cool. And yeah, the cosplay team, that was their debut on at retro mania. And that was, that was a lot of fun. We learned a lot. Uh, we're going to be doing some more events. Um, I'll be sending them out to some more events here soon, but yeah, we're growing. I think we were adding, we had two members at retro mania and then we're going to have, we just added another member and we're going to be adding a fourth probably Mm -hmm. next week. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, that it was fun. I liked it. I like seeing them too. And uh, the one I had a question was, he was a Z06 gold, but what what was the backstory on him? Because it looked like he was like a king or something. Yeah, that was. Um, he's not part of the team. Um, he was uh just someone we were collabing with. I forget his name. I think his name is Cedric actually, and he makes like his stuff out of paper mache. That's what like, it looked like. And I was like, yeah. that it was like very, you could tell because his collar was paper, but it was so well done though. Like well, I was well like, painted. Yeah. yeah, it was well painted. I was like, this is interesting. I didn't want to have a lot to say because he was like off meeting other people. So I didn't really have time to ask him anything. He's really nice. He's really sweet. He, he, uh, I, he just makes his own stuff. I think he had a Quantum Ranger one that he wore on Sunday. He wore a different um... one on Sunday. Yeah. So oh, wow. he has he has a couple of them. I saw him at More Phenomenal last year, and I remember okay. him because of the big bulky helmet. Like he makes his own helmets out of paper mache, yep. so they're real, they're big. They're almost like Funko Pop size. That's and, I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, but he has a bunch of different ones. I think he has three of them that he does. And the King Ranger, the Gold Ranger, the O Six. I think he's more like kind of King Ranger, like O Ranger. 
Okay. And, okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, he does another one, Quantum Ranger. I guess that's what Fire Ranger and Time Ranger. If I'm oh, that's correctly. right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when you were at Retro Mania, did you actually get to walk around the like the floor and stuff and see all that old school toys and memorabilia? I did. I did more so last year. This year I was working it, so it was like. Okay, I need to go make sure the mics work. I need to go make oh. sure uh, the guests are coordinated. Uh, the, the one thing that was annoying about it this year, it was not annoying, but what we scheduled the, the panels was right after their lunch. And then their lunch was oh. late the, for the celebrity guests. So I was trying yeah. to make sure that they got fed and they weren't on stage cranky and all that. You know what I mean? Because you, you get hangry sometimes. You know what I mean? But um, we, we got it all worked out. So it was a lot more coordinating than I thought it would be. Um, because I thought I was like, I'm just the talent. I just walk in and <laughs> I, oh, I do yeah. the interviews and stuff like that. It was like, no, can you help like make sure everybody's settled? And I was like, okay, sure. Like go hang out with Serena Vincent for a little bit. Heck yeah. Like, so <laughs> say no more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I went and talked to her in the back, uh, the green room for like 30 minutes. It was awesome. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, it was a lot, it was a lot of fun at retro media, but as far as seeing the stuff, I got to walk around a little bit. Um, what I wanted to do, what I didn't get a chance to do was walk around on the Sunday at four o'clock an hour before they close and try to get mm. some deals. I didn't get to do that this year. Um, but I, I, th- I think there'll be some more opportunities. Um, not, if not a retro mania, definitely has some other cons coming up. Definitely. And uh, are you, do you have like a list? Cause I just actually made a list today of the comic cons. I want to plan to go to like kind of like before summertime. And I, I didn't realize there was that many that actually happened in the central Texas, but are you going to, do you have a plan to like go as a, uh, as like a guest or not a guest, but like as a con goer, or do you plan to go as, as legacy and nerd? Um, it depends. I, I got hired for a couple of them already. Um, oh. so, um, the nostalgia con is the big one. I have been yes. working on that very, working on that very closely with them. Um, but the other ones that there's a retro mania, um, not retro mania, retro expo in Plano that we're working with. Um, mm. but I don't know if that is going, that's a more star Wars themed. Right. I don't know if that's going to be me or some of my team members that, that go out there. Um, of course, you know, there's cons that I'm looking at. Um, one that I really want to do that is not solidified yet is um, um, at Wonderland, they have some horror themed cons. And the only horror mm-hmm. theme that I do is Chucky. And that's okay. the only one. That's my, that's the one that like, there's, you know, I know there's a bunch of different kinds like zombies and Elm Street and Jason the only yeah. one I really like connect with, not and I shouldn't connect with it because kind of, well, I guess it does make sense with toys and stuff, right? But like is is Chucky. So they are gonna be here in San Antonio in March, and I'm trying to like get in on that one, you know, to work that one. Even though it's not right. Power Rangers, I'm trying to get in on that one. Um I know there's Hill Country Comic Con coming up here in April. Um I haven't I haven't really seen anything that um, I connect with yet, but I'm sure I'm going to go probably just as a con goer. Yeah. Maybe... Now Hill Hill Country is the same location as Retro, right? Correct. Yes. It's okay. just run by different people. All right. Okay. And, and there's some uh, we of course like we do because I'm part of the Countdown City Geeks here in San Antonio, so we are doing Space Con uh, in October. That's um, right. That's going to be the first. This is the same people that do Superhero Comic Con and Car Show. Mm-hmm. And we are doing that for sure in June. Um, okay. So we have a lot. I'm trying to think. So if I start from the beginning, the next big event I know for sure is May, is Nostalgia Con. Then mm-hmm. June, we have Superhero. July, we have Retro Expo. And then I think skip to October, we have Space Con. And then in December, um, I'm going to be working with Nostalgia Con on their uh, event in Houston. So I'll be. Mm-hmm. It's the only one I'm looking at traveling at this one for this year. So okay. I wanted to just, we just announced that one or he just announced that one. And so, um, but we're, we're still, we're still focused on the San Antonio one, make sure that is all completed and happens. And then we'll start focusing right. on the Houston one. Well, me and Jim, we will, we'll be at nostalgia con. We've already, oh. uh, we already have the tickets ready to be purchased. Like I guess this week. Okay, but, cool. Uh, but make sure to yeah, use we, my coupon code because you get a little money, little money's <laughs> off just to help you out. Hell yeah! And so <laughs> I, we're gonna probably do the whole weekend too. Oh, cool. We're gonna do the whole Friday, Saturday, Sunday because he's never been to a three day con, and I've only been to one. So we're gonna probably knock that out and do that. And That's then I awesome. really, I want to go to that superhero one that uh, 
uh, cuz I missed it last year, so I want to yeah. do that again. Yeah, the superhero one is much I mean, it's fun. You know, it's very yeah. guests are A plus guests. Like last year it was Andrew Garfield and Brie Larson the... and Ellie yeah, Stanfield. I saw that. But yeah, the only, you know, and the only thing about superheroes is just make sure to like, you know, you probably need to say before then because it's it's mm-hmm. pricier, right? So it like, was. you know, a one day ticket is 80 bucks. You know what I mean? Like Mm. You know, nostalgia con one day ticket is forty five dollars. A weekend mm. is ninety bucks. You know what I mean? So um that's one thing I think we're trying to accomplish from nostalgia con is make it more family friendly and family affordable as well. Right. But um superhero is a is a whole different experience. You know, I've seen when we were at superhero last year because we had our booth and we were doing panels, um uh, Ted was with uh Ming Na Wen and Katie Sackoff and uh, oh, Aliqua yeah. Cox Aliqua Cox from Echo. Um you know, people that were coming to our booth were from Minnesota, from Oregon, Whoa. from Washington, like, you know, yeah. Idaho, Ohio, you know, Iowa. Like, they were from they were from all over the country. Yeah. So that is one thing about superheroes, definitely, like, a conglomerate of people. Because the good thing about superheroes, like, they get – the one thing last year that they had is they had never had um, Kit Harrington and um, <laughs> Amelia Clark, who played um, – John mm. Snow and Daenerys do a photo op just the two of them together to offer oh. to people. So that was a big reason a lot of yeah. people came in and flew in for this one. I've heard rumors of this year for superhero what their plan is for like a never before photo op has ever that's gonna happen. And dude, you might pay the dude. monies, you know. I'm I'm letting you know now. Like, no, I, I can almost guarantee. This photo op does not exist anywhere. And what the rumor Ooh. I heard about this year was, oh my god, dude! Like just <laughs> people might are have to just keep my eyes open. Yeah, yeah, people people might making some involuntary actions when they find out. For oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I swear, <laughs> you know, I swear, you know, that was totally me. The bank, you know, they're just trying to say there's some fraudulent charges going on. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's oh, always a plan. Uh, but so the I don't know. Be good. It'll be good to see you there. I've been working hard on that one. Um, actually, I don't know if I told you this. Um, um, I was the one that got them set up with Walter Jones. Oh, so yeah, I, yeah. You mentioned yeah, that. So yeah. He's going to be there because, you know, I helped with Does that. He, I, helped, oh, sure. I helped get that set up. And I'm going to have guests in my own booth as well. At uh, I'm going to have my own booth at, uh, at NostalgiaCon. I'm going to have uh, Tracy Lynn Cruz. Who you guys oh. might know. Ashley yep. from Power of Space and Turbo. We're going to have Philip Andrew, who's okay. the Lunar Wolf Ranger, Merrick. Yep. And then we're also going to have Thunder Rosa, a uh, former AEW women's champion. And I just okay. made some calls today. We might have a fourth. And she, you know, I don't want to say it was up and coming. Like this person's going to be very big, like in about like five or six years. So oh, it's kind of like yeah. So yeah, uh, we we will be having that person possibly in our booth, but that person will definitely be at the con. We're just trying to mm. figure some stuff out, maybe possibly. So. Can me and Jim kind of like loiter somewhere around the table and feel important a little? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man. You, I'll call, you'll be like, "There's my posse, man." Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I was telling, I was telling my cosplay team, I was like, guys. I want you like, cause we, it's like a box, right? It's like a living room square box, right? It's like, I want you guys positioned at every corner, like looking like security as Rangers, like protecting them. Yeah. So that, that was like, hopefully that's the plan. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Get them some like little name badges that are totally misspelled that say Skirty or something like that. Yes, yeah. that's awesome. Skirty. <laughs> Skirty. Skirty. I love I that. Can, and I could totally make it for you too. I have the laser machines. I make them. Have like a white like duct tape on them, and just like all sideways. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. With a backwards S and everything. Hell yeah! <laughs> so we're down for this now. Okay, we're gonna do this. <laughs> so I don't know if the I don't know if they're gonna come back to Austin. I think they are. It's because it's like one of those like traveling comic cons uh, called a uh, Galaxy Con. Yeah, so they had it last year in Austin, and I absolutely loved it. I went all three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's probably something you should, you probably keep an eye out for. It's in like September. I heard so. about. I, I heard that. I heard some rumors about that, and the only thing I heard was that someone didn't like someone being there. So whether it was like Austin didn't like GalaxyCon being in there, or GalaxyCon didn't like being at that venue, or that venue oh. didn't end up like being Gal- GalaxyCon. 
something happened there, so I'm not entirely sure if they're going to go back to Austin next year, right? Um, okay, but, or or possibly be in a different venue or something like that. Um, I heard I heard rumors, so I don't yeah. know how it, it could possibly it could possibly be nothing, and they could just be in the same spot yeah. and happen at the same time. So, it, I mean, it possibly could have been that location because it was it was pretty because it was the same. There was like a lot of stuff going on apparently that weekend. Because uh, there was a multiple people that asked me while I was leaving on the streets, like, what's going on? What's going on? And uh, what they were doing is the uh, people were, like, letting them in on the side of the building because they, they have, like, a bunch of, like, double doors everywhere. So they were just, like, letting people randomly in, I guess. And that's yeah, probably that's what that problem. was. That's, that, a that, that's, that's a big problem. That's a big problem. Yeah, yeah. So I could see that. That was the deal. Yeah. That might yeah, be a venue thing then. That, yeah. that sounds like a venue thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I know Greater Austin's coming up too in June, I think. And uh, I like going to that one, but it's kind of outgrown its location. And uh, it's like really packed. One? You went to a big one last year, you said. Was it last yeah. summer? Uh, ooh, uh, Bell County. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I, yeah, that, that one kind of caught my eye too. And I, I wanted to go, because that one had um, Catherine, right? And Jason yeah. Fox. We we got to talk to Catherine, but Jason, we weren't able to talk to. He had a really long line, but uh, it was like five buildings in total, and it's just oh, wow. massive. It's a massive venue, and it's the biggest one we've ever went to. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. And it was just vendors everywhere. It was so crazy. Like you could easily spend like two grand there, not even know it. Man, are you gonna do uh, Power Morphicon this year? Or are you gonna try? I don't think I'll be able to even make it out there for that one. Yeah. But more phenomenal, we're gonna be there for that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're definitely gonna be there. Um, was it two nights ago or something? He has plans. Like his plans are are fun, man. So hopefully, okay, uh, we get he gets those dates secured here soon, and he can get the lineup that he told me that he wants. So yeah. Ooh. Okay, we didn't <laughs> hear that, but he did say that uh, that you invited him on the next uh, live broadcast or the live uh, video that you're doing on YouTube. Yeah, I just, um, like I told you before, I have some medical stuff that I'm trying to yep. uh, heal through this month and then probably um, next month, next March up. Because I, I was like doing lives like consistently for like a week, yep. every week for like a long time. I remember those, I, yeah, yeah. 2024 came up and I'm just like, because I knew I was going to have some things come up like personal wise. So like I was mm-hmm. powering through work, you know, trying to fit in like two months worth of work and like a half a month sort of stuff. And you know, yeah. just trying to catch up with a bunch of my stuff in my personal life. So when I could have time to heal, I wouldn't be stressing about anything, you know? So, right. Um, right, right. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be starting up those again here up in March. Um, I do. I've talked to some Rangers too about being on, on live stream. Oh, okay. um, so that is in the works. If not, I know definitely I'm trying to have Chris back on again. Okay. Uh, yeah, I watched that. That one was actually really fun to watch. Yeah, I had to demonetize yeah. that one because he kept on throwing the f bomb like every other word. Oh. So like, but that's you know, that's yeah. how he is. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So and I was talking yeah. to I was talking to Tracy and she was like, "What did you expect?" And I was like, "I don't know." I was like, "But like every other word, you know." Yeah. Was like, but, <laughs> but you'll probably be on. I have to turn off the demonetization on that one too. But um, that one that one brought in a lot of new watchers and that was uh, a very good. For both of us, because, you know, that was supposed to help his Twitch stream. So a lot of people moved over to his Twitch oh. and a lot of people came over and, and found me, which was which was very beneficial. So uh, I want to do some I haven't talked to him about it yet, but do more kind of leading up to his third episode of um, a bloodline of the grid, his YouTube that's, series. Yeah, that's so right. uh, I know they did some filming here just recently. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, he he. It's funny because like all the other actors in that, they're like, let's keep it a surprise. And Chris is over in there like, you know, I'm going to die. <laughs> and he was just like telling, just like totally spoiling everything mm-hmm. about it. Like, I mean, if you watch the live, my live stream, he talks about like how his plan was to kill Andros from the very beginning. Oh, so, yeah, like, yeah. I don't so think he really likes there. that character, right? Uh, <laughs> I as... think he actually really loves the character. And that's the thing. But like he sees a one, there's only one outcome for this character. You know what I mean? Oh, so like he, that's the okay. way he sees it. Right, right. Um, okay. But uh he yeah, I want to have him back on. Uh he wanted to have he asked he met he emailed me and he was like, Hey man, if we come back on, can I have a uh, DJ Rivers come on? And I was oh. like, Heck yeah, man, that dude's a, like a Power Ranger community legend, dude. So <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, for those listeners that may not know, like DJ Rivers 
does a lot of the fan films over the years mm-hmm. for Power Rangers, and he's worked with many of them. He's worked also, if I'm incorrect, he's part of Starlight Studios as well. Oh, um, where he's yeah, okay. helped helped design some of their stuff for like the coins and right. uh, the, the legacy stuff as well, or the legacy that worked with the legacy stuff as well. I shouldn't say mm-hmm. it was the legacy stuff, but so I want to have him on. So hopefully, maybe that leads to Colin Bass. That'd be cool. I know Colin followed me on something he followed me yeah. somewhere so um i actually talked to like him a couple times on on tiktok he's, Colin Bass. Oh, he seems super cool man like his yeah, stuff he is looks really so, original yeah yeah i would love watching his stuff it's all you know behind the scenes and like everything's handmade you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. all those guys like even unworthy reached out to me and uh mm. and they're he that the, the 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 main guy over there not the main guy i will say because there's a whole team of them right but yeah the one that definitely is the the preliminary writer, uh, he reached out to me. He was super nice. I had done a review on the recent um, Psycho oh. Menace. Yeah. He reached out and he said thank you. And he posted me like on his Instagram, like my face on his Instagram. I was like, oh, no. dude, you have like two hundred thousand people on there, man. Like, wasn't ready for <laughs> that. Today. And he made he made a whole short with my face on it, and I'm just like, oh. You couldn't get the like, flattering, more cool. flattering picture though. I know. I don't know. I was on there just like. Triple chin, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one, only way to go, though. Yeah, right. Because honestly, when, of, I jump, when I jump on camera, I just jump on, dude. So yeah. yeah. Speaking of speaking of posting, so there was a a, a thumbnail that you you kind of like threw together, and I saw this whole thing unfold on Twitter. Oh my I, freaking god! Because I refuse to call it X, but yeah, like we yeah. made it, and then Bat and the Sun kind of like reposted it, oh and you're god. just like. I just made this thumbnail. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was insane, dude. So I made the so I heard just like everybody else, I heard the Fortnite thing, right? Yes. And so like I go and I make like a three minute video, right? Mm-hmm. And so I make a thumbnail for that video. And I guess I did like an amazing job on that thumbnail. Like people thought it was real. And I was just like, but if you look at the thumbnail, first of all, I put my watermark in there. You can yep. see it. You if you look you can see it. Like if you're glancing at it, you don't see it. If you just like you're looking at the image, you're gonna see it. Well, so I have I've worked with Aaron from Bat in the Sun. He's come on my show or my live stream once and, and I talk to him like you know, a couple times a month, right? We'll talk about different stuff. But um he I guess he saw my thing and thought it was real too. And he, <laughs> he just he posted it. And so when he posted it, like it just unraveled. It like yeah. it just Dude, I saw like people like publish articles talking about like how my they saw my thumbnail and it was a leak and and yeah and like these characters were coming to Fortnite and stuff like that. And I was just like, "Are you freaking serious, dude?" Like <laughs> it was insane. And then like I guess my thumbnail got posted like I don't know like twenty million times on Twitter or something ridiculous yeah. number. It was just crazy. Like, I, was just, I just kept seeing it over and over, and I was like. There's a watermark, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because, like, I feel like my followers are really, like, and people that knew me that were, like, really, like, that's Daniels, you know? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Is, there, is there money to give Daniels some credit at least, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think there some people were really cool about it. Um, some people that on the Twitter Power Rangers community, which we all know is, you know, has his ups, ups and downs, kind of stuck yeah. up for me too, which was I didn't expect um, because of where I fall in the fandom. I'm, I'm very much in the middle, right? So, mm-hmm. um which was nice. It was kind of nice to see people like stand up for me a little bit and, and yeah. say like, Hey, this came from Daniel, like, you know, the legacy of nerd or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was I know I did. Cool. I mentioned you in a, in some comments on tw- uh, TikTok Cause someone actually made a video with your thumbnail. And I was like, are you serious? Yo. I, didn't see I was that. like, that's Daniel. It's like, I know that. I know that cat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and like, I, I'm not gonna say I completely created that thumbnail. Like I, I used, um, I, I used art from Battle of the Grid. That's yeah. what I use. Yeah. What I will say, what I'll take ownership of is putting it together. But what I'll be taking ownership of is just finding clean images of that that had no markings on it, which yeah. took forever. Like that <laughs> took, you know. And I knew I knew in my head what the thumbnail was gonna be, but I was like, I need clean clear mm-hmm. images nothing with like battle of the grid on it or or just any other like tm or something like, like i need yeah, clean yeah. and i found those and that's what took forever you know what i mean but yeah. um so i'll take credit for that but other than that yes that that was all art from battle of the grid and i put a Fortnite stamp on it and yeah it, yeah 
It looked, looked legit good. though. Yeah. yeah. But when you when you said there was a watermark, I actually like zoomed down the image. Just, oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I've been how... doing that. I've been doing that lately just because I've been actually seeing the more not like a lot, but I've been seeing more of the thumbnails and even mm-hmm. images that I actually do make. Um people using them so i don't really have an issue people using them because i i like use other people's images as well but i was like it's something that i actually put together or make like you know if i can just little put my little watermark in there then i'm good with it you know and also kind of i can also kind of track like how far my images are going too right so yeah you know like i don't even know this person i don't even know how this person got a hold of me but they're you know they're using one of my images so you know i can see like how far it's going my reach is which is, is a good way to measure too yeah, that's just yeah, yeah, not to say that I can it's easy to track because I use a an app to multi post on multiple platforms mm-hmm. and it'll actually tell you like so and so posted here, 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 here of your image. Oh, that's cool. And uh, I, I was like, okay, that's cool, you know. But yeah, like you said, the reach on it and yeah, that was uh, interesting. Yeah. No, that one was insane. I mean, that one I lost completely yeah. track of. Like there was no control over that one. So <laughs> <laughs> I was just like laughing at work. I was like, dear God, this is wildfire with Daniel. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's fun. It's the only thing that sucks is like I went viral, but I didn't go viral. You know what I mean? Like yes. That's the only thing right. Like I could have used some followers and subscribers. That would have been nice. You know what I mean? But it's For okay. Real? At yeah. the same time, like, you know, I feel like the audience that I do have, like is like every every you know subscriber and follower I have, I feel is like, you know, maybe so a bigger channel is worth three of, you know, oh yeah, theirs because like mine's I the ones that I feel like I really earned right so like mm-hmm. you know they're the ones that actually watch and engage and stuff like that and yeah and you know numbers are great but you actually want people like to watch and listen and and, yeah. and follow right and the, yep. the followers I do have right now I feel like they do and so yeah I, I'm okay with not having just padded numbers but you know. It would have been yeah. nice to, to have to, a little bit more. Now, the one it, thing it I like about nice. the one I really like about your like live streams is uh, you have consistent watchers and interactions, and you actually highlight comments as you're going through the stream too, like to keep them engaged in conversation. Then there's a couple other live streams that I'll watch, and the, they just mention them in the beginning, and then that's it. You know, but yeah. You, and I like that's what I like about your stream is that you can keep it and you're pulling from multiple sources, too. So it's not just YouTube comments. You're actually pulling from other like Facebook, Instagram lives, and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. the Instagram is hard because it's the way the setup is on StreamYard. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's I, it kind of, you know, I was a viewer, too. Right. So of different stuff. Yeah. And, I, you know, you know, you like seeing your, your name and comment up there on yeah. screen. And, and so, like, if I can give that to other people. That's awesome. And not just that, but a lot of the people that follow me in my live streams, like what you're talking about, regulars and stuff like that, like mm-hmm. a lot of them I talk to on a daily, if not weekly basis. You know what I mean? So, okay. like, I've always been very clear, like, on my streams. Like, if you want to, like, talk and just chat, like, feel free to message me. Like, I, I don't have any problems with that. And the, the one thing I'll say is, like, now, because, you know, the, the, you know, I have so many more people that follow me. Um, I get a lot of spots and spam and, and, and scammers oh. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I will try to weed out. I'll maybe have someone message me a couple of times before I realize that like, they're a real person, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and then I'll, I'll respond and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I'm totally open to having anyone message me and want to chop power Rangers or you're in San mm-hmm. Antonio, especially like I'm definitely down to meeting more, making more friends in San Antonio for sure. Cause that's definitely what I'm really focused on right now. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm there with you. I'll be. I want to go down to San Antonio sometime because the San Antonio is actually more like uh, nerd friendly. Like, yeah. there's a whole bunch of comic shops, toy shops, you know. But in Austin, you don't have a lot of that, so it's more really? just like hipster here. So you got your <laughs> you know, beer gardens and your all natural food places and stuff. So oh, okay. we don't really we don't really have that. So I have to go to like New Braunfels and San Marcos and San Antonio or Waco at least in to go see that. Yeah, we, we have a lot of events down here for sure. We have a lot of mm-hmm. we have a big community. I think that's the thing, you know I I've been trying to focus on especially because um like you know it's like having an audience um, the, around the nation is awesome and I love it like you know I have people that follow me in Australia and Mexico and, and oh, Philippines right. and, and Canada yeah. and stuff like that and a, a couple of UKs but you know there's so many people here in San Antonio that like I can do events with and 
know, I can <laughs> hang out and chat with them. You know, I've been trying to do a lot more local stuff here. And, uh, and you know, whether it be Palangers or not, you know, like just like, there's a Mighty Ducks one this weekend, you know, that I may pop my head into. You know, there's a lot of, you know, San Antonio is like a wrestling hub. And, you yes. know, a lot of people don't know, but I, I do enjoy wrestling. I didn't, it's not something I can keep up with all the time, but I, you know, yeah. I try to watch all the pay-per-views and the big ones, like the big four. Right. But, right, right. um, you know, there's, there's such a community here, whether it be Rangers, anime, you know, wrestling, mm-hmm. um, horror, well, definitely a lot of horror stuff here and, and just regular superheroes. There's a lot of people to connect with. And I think I don't, you know, if I go somewhere, I, I'm going to, I always at least make one friend somewhere, which is, which is fun, you know, and, be part you feel small but you know it's such a big community it's almost like warming at the same time yeah yes feels like open arms uh to that sort of genre yeah and i like that too i like that a lot about san antonio because i used to go there all the time for like the car scene and stuff like car meets and car shows and and it was the same same way too and i was like i was always loved it so i i like to go to san antonio a lot so it's fun out here. There's a lot of different things. There's, a lot, I mean, that's the thing about San Antonio. It's so diverse and so many different types of people. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, they, and, you, there's something for everyone. And I would rather eat tacos from San Antonio than Austin. So, ooh, you said <laughs> it. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna say yeah. it again. <laughs> yeah, I've seen so, fights over that. <laughs> oh dear God, <laughs> backyard brawls. Right, but yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so um, ne- so. I want to get into like your toys. So the lightning collection, uh, it's kind of on pause right now, but I've seen that you've posted up the new three zero Zio figures. And this is the second wave basically from the mighty Morphins. Yeah. And I am absolutely loving these things. I I just wish I had, I wish I had the money for it, but (laughs) yeah, me too. And you know, I wanted to pre-order, but like I just need them to come out first. It's it's hard, like a hundred dollars a figure, right? And I really yeah, what I just, want is I I want the set, but the set's five hundred bucks, right? So yes, but they're so yeah. pretty. Although, like, since I since Lightning Collection is on quote unquote pause right now, mm-hmm. um, you know we've had a lot of more announcements for like third party figures from like you yes. know unlicensed figures and stuff like that, and and I've made videos on that which have you know garnered a lot of reactions and a lot of people have voiced displeasure with the three zero as far as like the like the quality of the manufacturing, right? Oh. Which is I didn't know about because I always thought three zero was like the pedestal, right? Right. And so but at the same time it's like I want I want the official licensed stuff rather mm. before I get the unlicensed stuff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just because I want it to say like Red Zero Ranger, not like you know, Red Star Hero oh, or yeah. something. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like the little <laughs> stuff that kind of matters to me because I know I don't know if you saw like one of the unlicensed figures, like um, albino white tight albino oh. white lion. I don't remember what it was called, yeah. but albino tiger or something like that. And I was yeah, just like, yeah. imagine having a figure on your shelf that says albino tiger. You know yeah, what I mean? exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, it just wouldn't hit right at all. You know what I mean? We, like, we'd probably end up with like crystal rangers or something, <laughs> right? Or it'd be like crystal heroes or something. Crystal heroes, I'll, yeah. The the Zio ones I really want. Like I would really hope to get those, um, whether I you know get one at a time event or eventually get the set right. But right, right. out of all the unlicensed figures that have been announced, there is one that like really catches my eye because I just know they're never going to make a beautiful figure like this. Is they made like a green samurai version from Ninja Storm? There's gonna be one of those coming out, and I'm like, oh my um... god, and it looks beautiful dude like look they did a great job on it i want to say so so toys or susu toys i don't know how to pronounce it i never learned Uh from the video but um they're making it and they're doing like a limited like 100 piece run oh dang i think it's called like green shogun hero or something like that it's something like that it's something weird samurai hero or something like that but um it looks good and that's the only one i'm kind of considering because the rest of them are like tommy figures and you know eventually all those tommy figures are going to come out right but yeah that one catches my eye for unlicensed and that one if i were to get any of them i'd get that one for sure because yeah green samurai like he was a fan favorite for a lot of people i mean me too like cam was a genius and yeah and when when i saw that he dropped his vest and it was weighted 
I was like, complete badass, you know? <laughs> yeah, and this, and this figure, like, has the... Op- you can take off the vest and yeah. put on a different helmet, like his Super Samurai version. Yeah. It's funny you say Super Samurai, because it wasn't Super Samurai. It was, like, yeah. Super Samurai mode, right? Super yeah, it was Samurai Super Samurai mode. mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, because we got Super Samurai later on, but um, mm-hmm. it has that different helmet to put on as well, and it's like, oof. So pretty, man. Like a hundred piece run, though. Damn, that's gonna go quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to say it's a hundred. It might be a little bit less, actually. But yeah, um, yeah that's that's the one I'm considering, and, and I think it's a hundred dollars, something like that. So, oh, yeah, oh. and it's not bad, like albino tiger. It's not like yeah, you know, emerald. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like emerald ninja flower or something. You know what I mean? Like, Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I'd put that gif of like uh, Jeff Goldblum or that dude from Jurassic Park when he's like taking his sunglasses off. He's like, dear God, <laughs> dear God. <laughs> uh, OK, uh, I saw that they've been releasing a lot of like unlicensed stuff as well. Like uh, there was that green Tommy Green and White Ranger. But I think it yeah. was from Bat and Sun version. Yeah, that uh, was green. Um, from called tree new toys i don't even know if like this is our first oh. figures but i don't like them i mean they i said in my video very odd yeah <laughs> yeah they're very bulky they look very roided um yes and you know i know the head sculpts they can't look like jdf because they're unlicensed right but like mm-hmm. they look like joe canseco or something like i don't even know like <laughs> yeah just like such a box head head sculpts they don't look good to me I mean, I I can see them. You know, it's the Bat in the Sun one isn't bad, but it's not like accurate to Bat in the Sun either. Right. I mean, so it's like, uh, I guess it's just it, they really like. Oh God! It's funny because someone commented on one of, when I posted because I post a lot of stuff on Facebook, mm-hmm. especially about upcoming stuff, so people have a chance to know about it, right? And um, someone put like, "Why is the bold so big on them?" Oh yeah. <laughs> and someone <laughs> responded and says, "Because you don't disrespect the legend." No, I, just, I still I still think about that. It still makes me laugh. <laughs> that still it's keeps just, you up at night. <laughs> no, my God. There's yeah. such a you know, someone typed that in and was just like so proud of themselves. And I'm like right there with you. I'm proud of you as well. So <laughs> Oh my god. Someone get this man a raise. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, okay. Well she this year has been a hell of a ride so far, and it's only February. Yeah, man. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on for sure. I don't, I don't even know. Yeah, like it's just, you know, so many things with Power Rangers that are up in the air right now. And then not only that, just like you know, we got all these random announcements of random figures, and then yeah, even the McFarland stuff. You know what I mean? Like, like who thought that Hasbro would team up with McFarland? Like seriously, that's what I was so confused. I was like, they're more DC. <laughs> page puncher power rangers yeah i mean i think i i compared it to like like middle of the attitude era where if like wwf decided to Mm. team up with wcw like yeah they're just like they've talked so much crap about one another too like publicly (laughs) and then it's just like hey we're working together guys and you're like yeah (laughs) okay like that's not one thing that we expected so I, i know they they released the they did the pre-orders for the page punches for the GI Joe and the transformers. And yep. Oh, yeah. uh, I know the GI Joe, anything GI Joe sells out quick. Right. But like, I was looking at the transformer stuff and it looked pretty cool. Like I kind of like their transformer stuff and kind of makes me a little excited for what they might do for power. Rangers. I know they're very small figures and yeah. very little articulation, but like if they can do something cool with it, like hell yeah. Like I would love it. if they did like the seven inch uh, single ones and have the comic yeah. with it. But but who, I feel like that's the next step if these do well for sure, right? Like, oh yeah, you know, if these these this becomes like a real good selling point for them, they're gonna mm-hmm. do more. And I think the good thing about this too is like, even if power the Power Rangers ones don't sell well, but if they sell well in general, they'll just mm-hmm. keep doing them. You know what I mean? They'll whether keep, yeah, whether it's Power Rangers or not, right? So like, exactly. Me, me thinking right off the bat, like they're gonna do red and green two pack, oh, right? right? And then right. maybe it has to be. And then maybe like another one be like, you know, a, a, a Tommy two pack or something like that. So I think that's yeah. what we would get realistically. But they, they kind of the make me excited a little bit. Now the question is like, what what kind of comics would they put in there? That's the. I mean, you clearly got to do the Boom Studios, right? Like you would think, you have right? To do. You got to do and, like the Hall of Foil Boom Studios. 
If not, you don't do Boom Studios, then why not bring back the old 90s? You know, the ones, some of the ones that Marvel did or, you know, the, yeah. the ones that Saban put out by themselves. Like, yeah, that yeah, would be yeah. that would be super cool to see reprodos on that. Like, I would think so. Yeah, man, it's got me head scratching now. Just thinking about it. I think uh, th- I think realistically they would have to do Boom, right? Like that would be have to do Boom. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. that's the Power Rangers contract. What it was, right? And all the yeah. stuff has to be even Boom stuff. When I talked to Boom, they were like, "All our stuff gets approved by Hasbro." So yeah, yeah. I know that Boom is. I saw an article today on Yahoo that that Boom is coming out with uh, an animation style or some sort of like TV series series. Or I saw it on you Yahoo. I, oh, I I'll send you the link. That. Okay. I'll I'll find it again and I'll send it to you. I mean, I mean, Let's... we can say this on your podcast, but you know, we w- when me and you and Braun talked to Melissa backstage a little bit, right? Like, oh yeah, no. you know, she told us that they wanted to do things for sure. So, like, yeah. you know, that there, I know there were some secrets that we swore we wouldn't tell, but like, you know, mm-hmm. she one thing that I really want to do is animated Power Rangers, like for sure. So, yeah. I remember That'd that they awesome. we, we kind of like tossed around the idea to her, and she actually like told us like they do want to do some sort of animation yeah. style, you know. <laughs> it's funny because it's like we're trying to give you the idea, and they're like, "We're already trying." Like you know yeah, what I mean? Oh, like yeah, yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> you know, would be cool, right? Like yes, we know we'd be cool because we suggested it last year. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, like <laughs> it was in the company meeting, you know. <laughs> right. We've been trying to figure this out for like four years already. You know what yeah. I mean? Like what I'm excited to see what how does how it does on the fans is a uh, go, go lose ranger, which is coming out in April to uh, Disney yeah. plus of all places. I don't, so what I've seen so far, it doesn't look familiar enough to the power Rangers right. mainstream enough to like, I don't like, I don't think this thing is going to connect that well. You know what I mean? So right now, is this going to be like, I don't know much about it. I just know of it. Right. Is this an actual Sentai series? Like an actual anime Sentai series? I or don't is it think so. an anime based on Sentai series. I think it's an animated Sentai series. And then parody of it as and a, well. And right? a parody, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I saw the storyline of it and it seems pretty interesting. Like like they basically made a, a contract with like the evil corporate uh, the evil uh like the evil henchman or the evil the top evil. And like they have to like fight each other once a week to like put up appearances. And then one guy's like trying to infiltrate the system to like see what's really going on and it and it apparently like it's a whole debacle so and it doesn't sound like anything like power rangers it doesn't so. sound like power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> i mean and then it looks nothing like power rangers too right it looks it kind of looks more like um what is that um vulcan not vulcan maybe i don't know what it was like that old 70s cartoon oh uh, not, not voltron but there was another one as well but um yeah it, it doesn't I don't think it's going to connect as much with the Power Rangers community because this really doesn't look like it to me. You know what I mean? So, yeah, right. you know, I think if Boom were to come out and, you know, partner with someone, you know, obviously not E1 or Lionsgate, but, you know, if they came out yeah. and partners with somebody and made something happen, I think it'd be, I think it'd do well. You know what I mean? And right. especially if you like were able to do it, like maybe not direct to video, but like have it like on Netflix or something like that, or, or even Paramount yeah. or something like that. Um, I think people would really, really watch, but it's just getting it done, right? So, right. I know Netflix. I mean, we, I, we, well, we talked to we talked to people, and Netflix is very pleased with the numbers they have with Power Rangers, and they want yeah. more. I was so, just about to to mention that 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 a once and always and Cause of Fury did really well with the numbers, and I would I would see that they would take kindly to an animated Power Ranger series. I mean, uh, hell, would. a lot of stuff is going to Netflix. I mean, uh, Raw is going to Netflix next year. Which I don't understand how that's gonna happen, but yeah, I don't know how it's all gonna work. But I, I mean, they'll figure it out. I mean, yeah, you know, after once and always, Netflix asked for twenty three episodes of Cosmic Fury. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah, oh. but Hasbro's like, we're only gonna do ten. And, oh, but well, Netflix, that is bonkers. <laughs> I know, but Netflix wanted twenty twenty three, right? So that would have been a whole Cosmic Fury and Super Cosmic Fury. Exactly. So yeah. okay, um, you know, they they want more. It's just enough the money right. to do it you know what i mean so whether it becomes a you know not necessarily a power Rangers becomes a netflix property but becomes like you know you know yeah. they partner with netflix to make it you know because netflix does fund things like they funded the masters of the universe stuff right so like it's not to say they wouldn't fund a power rangers animated thing right. it's just you know 
I really feel like at this point is just getting Hasbro to say like he wants yes. to do it. Like yeah, I, I, yeah. I think that's the biggest issue. Like Hasbro is like no, not right now. You know what I mean? Like and you're like why not? I'm like just because. And yeah, so because, like that yeah. <laughs> that that seems to be their answer. Like yeah. Because, they, yeah. I saw the uh, not the live stream, but I saw the recap of the live stream for Hasbro today, and they actually knocked it out of the park with those Marvel Legends. But I've noticed though, in store, GI Joe is now starting to peg warm like hardcore. Oh, yeah. So but I'm starting to get summer. a little bit worried about because if you saw the thing that they were down by twenty percent uh, from last year to now. So I'm kind of worried, but I haven't got to see the whole breakdown of it. So I don't know whether it's for like show or like kid toys or what. What's all that twenty percent? So they're they're down twenty percent um, for toys. That's what that's what they're oh, down for right now. As gotcha. a company, I think they are. I want to say fifteen. So they're fifteen percent projected. It's weird how they measure it. So every year they measure it like how much profit we're going to make and profits always going to be a lot more than the last yes. quarter. Right. Yeah. So yep. they were saying that they fell under 15% of projections, I think is what they said. So they didn't make as oh. much profit as they wanted to and they expected to. And because of that, gotcha. because of the way companies work, they had already spent that money. So that money is not that money that they got back yep. that they're expecting to get back. Right. I think though big, I don't know. It just seems like a dumpster fire. Honestly, what it really seems like, um, mm-hmm. It seems like there's just like fires all over Hasbro in different versions. Like whether yeah. it be, you know, they they sold Lionsgate for pennies to the or not Lionsgate. They sold E1 for pennies to the dollar yeah. to the dollar what they paid for it, right? So like they basically gave it to Lionsgate for free. Like take yes. it off, right? And then they wrote it off as a tax write off, right? And then yeah, and then you know the 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 toy community as well, like or the toy um, not the community but the toy market, you know. It, there being such a surplus of stuff and they were talking and i listened to the call and they were talking about the issues with discounted toys but i think what people need to remember is like people don't realize is like when you go buy a toy at ross like uh you know a lightning collection figure that was six dollars at ross but it was 25 dollars in the store right right as we already made their money in that figures the people that lost the money was target who sold that toy to ross you know what i mean oh. so target is the one that lost Target, Walmart, GameStop, all these right. you know, big bad toy store. Because we saw some uh, online exclusives of Ross too, right? So, right. you know, they're the ones that lost out uh, on that money. So how that's going to affect Hasbro is when they go in to do their third, fourth quarter orders, they're not going to order 30,000 units. They're going to order 10, yep. the minimum. The minimum is 10,000, right? So that's all yep. they're going to order. So that's where Hasbro is hurting, is not in the... And what they sold at the discount st- stores, it's what's going to be in stores next quarter or yes. probably fourth quarter, right? Probably fourth quarter yeah. because Target and Walmart are not going to be ordering that. So, so I, I really anticipate Walmart, Target to be ordering a lot less toys, whether it be um, Hasbro, McFarlane, or Jada, yes. or or Hot Wheels, or whatever. Maybe not Hot Wheels, because Hot Wheels sells, but whatever it may be right like there that's what they're going to sell less and there's gonna be a lot more quantity and this is where mm-hmm. you know we're gonna get a lot more into the pre-order era again because like we're not gonna see a lot of this stuff in stores being realistic we're not going to because of the of the massive discount thing that like it was really good for the consumer at that time right like yeah and i feel like it was good and like it was good and it has good points and it's bad points right like the good points was mm-hmm. you saved a lot of money right Another yeah. good point was that, you know, it probably brought in new collectors or reignited, you know, interest in brands that wasn't there because they had the opportunity to buy it, right? Yep. The bad news is it's going to affect the that that part of the economy as well. So That's right. It's it's just like a whole like, you know, what what you can balance which is good and bad. Yeah. And for us, I mean, right now it was good cuz we got a lot of our crap. I do like I mean, like it's ridiculous. You know, you can't see oh, the Lord. podcast. I just got yeah. mountains and mountains of, you know how hard it is to pass up a lightning collection figure for $6, no matter what it is. Yeah, I mean, exactly. like I bought, I have like four Parantis heads. Like it's ridiculous, <laughs> but, um, you know, we're, we're as, as collectors, we're probably going to see bad result of it coming up here in a yeah. couple of months. I would think. Yep. I know that last year, uh, Q3, Q3 and Q4, uh, especially for like power Ranger lightning collection, it went, to store right to clearance like it was like a yeah. week in between 
So yeah. I, I could see that you know, it would hurt. And yeah. I mean, being I'm realistic, sure. like because of the state of the lightning collection, I, there's the last two ways I don't even think I have. And like, I'm not going to oh, pay yeah. $25 for it. You know, even I know Hasbro Pulse has their little quote unquote clearance sale, which is really yep. just $19.99, which, which it should have been in the entire time. Exactly. But, you know, yeah. like until those figures get down to $15 or $10, I'm not going to buy them. And I know they will. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that, I'm uh, the same there with you. I haven't even purchased the last wave yet with like uh, Turbo Red because it's like I did literally... get Turbo Red because that one sold out, and I was like, I got to get that one, and that uh, one sold out, so I did get that one. But um, I I did purchase uh the what's it called the premium uh membership. Yeah, I I did buy that because I knew the Master Morpher was gonna go yep. instantly, and sure enough, I was so lucky. I bought that like the week before. <laughs> Yeah, Master Morpher was in. Yeah, that whole saga like was insane for me. Like, I think mm-hmm. every YouTuber or every like everyone was asking every single one of us, like, "What do you know about the Master Morpher?" And I'm like, "Dude, chill." Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you know, or I know what I've told you. You know what I mean? So, I mean, there's That's not many things. There, I mean, you know, I'm not like Toku Topics, right? Like, there's not many things that I know that people aren't allowed to know. So, like, yes. there's there's a couple things that I know, but that's. I mean, it's it's not that'd be a little bit interesting, but it's not a big deal, right? It's not gonna like be something that you really will affect you, right? But right, I know right. the Master Morpher situation was crazy, and that was that, nuts. I feel like my channel in particular, even more, some you know, I'm not saying like you know, it got highlighted for some reason uh, for the Master Morpher, and people were coming to me a lot, and maybe it'll be because you know I make myself so accessible to people that which is, I, I think there was at one point I was like, I hate this thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, it was yeah. like I probably got like 40 or 50 questions a day about it for like a good three months and it was just Dear like god yeah yeah it was insane dude for a while and I remember talking about it on one of my streams and I was like guys because I remember there was a point where like there was like seven people that asked in a row like what do you know about the Master Morpher and I'm just oh. like another time I was like I hate the Master Morpher right now you know what <laughs> I mean like it's like, worn I, you down it wore me down but you know I do think for the people that want to know, what do I know? I think seeing the runs I've seen on GI Joe, because I did collect GI Joe for a long time. I don't anymore, mm-hmm. but um, I think there'll be one more run. So if you have everybody, it'll be random and it'll be still be quick. But I know people are still wanting it. I think there'll be at least one more run of Master Morphers. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. The availability because I remember when they first dropped them, I was sitting at home and I was like, it's five thirty p.m. I was like, they're still up for sale what's going on i guess it just had to for like people to like just get home from their days and stuff to but it sold out immediately at six and i was like oh well that was quick (laughs) well people didn't realize like that first day was three different runs and so that's right that's right yeah so that first day was the in stock which went quickly Mm -hmm. and then they put up a pre-order one which that's what sold out like around six o'clock and then remember if you remember like friday night or saturday morning they put it back up or yes, round number that. three and that stayed up till monday and so people were like oh it's back up i can get it whenever i was like dude some people were like it. oh you want it go order it you know i was like right that now. that is not gonna last till monday monday yep. morning came sold out i remember that i was like people were like Duh. i didn't get my chance to get my master more i'm like yes you, you did dude you like you totally chance. did yeah. <laughs> it was up for two days for the third run yeah and then the fourth run was the one that happened on the like same day they dropped those Valiverse later. figures. Yeah. Yeah. It was not two remember weeks that. later. It was like maybe a month later or maybe month like later. two months later. Yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember they dropped it because it was his birthday, uh, JDL's birthday. Yes. That, And they were like, yeah. oh, got to make some money the, real quick. And I was <laughs> on the phone with one of um, JDF's friends when that happened. And they just like, because they're they're working a lot on Legend of the White Dragon right now. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not I'm not it's not bad in the sun. It's another friend, like it's like right, someone, right. not a not a public figure friend. Um, and they've been helping a lot with Legend of the White Dragon, and then they knew the Valiverse thing was coming out, and they were just like, I can't believe Hasbro did that. Like you know what I mean? Oh. Like, yeah. So yeah. it was <laughs> it was very much to coincide with the Valiverse's All stuff, right. which was interesting. I, I mean, I'm sure they're never going to admit that, but like, how can you not see? Right. You know, now, now that you say like now that you mentioned that about how Hasbro kind of like dropped it the same day, uh, there's been a lot of rumors and there's actual pictures to like reference it, but or not. 
Boom. Do you think Boom has like stolen like fan ideas, fan uh, characters and stuff? Um, I mean, it's hard. Oh uh, gosh, it's it's hard. It's hard to say that. You know what I mean? Um, I think there's been a lot of similar good ideas that people mm-hmm. have used and. Um, at the same time, like, it's hard to like, look at this one thing and look at the other thing and you can barely see a difference. Right. Right. But like, like at least visually on some things. Right. But like, you know, some of the background stuff now, um, oh my gosh, man, this is one of those things that I know that people don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I can see why people say that for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't blame you know. I, I was just seeing like side by side. So I was like, "Hey, they look similar," but I'm yeah. I didn't want to talk because I don't know much about it. So, I mean, we know a lot with like what the community has said, like especially around like Draken and stuff like that. Yes, and, yes. and and there being issues with you know Higgins and and Parrot and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, that's just you know, you if you enjoy what you're watching and what you're reading, like that's fine. You know, that's, that's totally fine, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're, I enjoy a lot of the stuff that Boom Comics puts out as well, and definitely, you know, yeah. And I, I, unfortunately, it's hard to know the whole stories on those things. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, dang. Yeah. I mean, speaking of Boom, I've been really enjoying their comics lately, especially with the uh, in uh, the Melissa Flores ones. Yeah. So I've, of... I've been picking them up, but I haven't read them yet, dude. So yeah, there's I, a lot I of story building. So I really like it, though. It's good. Yeah. We got the boom, the Power Rangers, the the hiatus. Yeah. You don't know how many times I see that on the on the Power Ranger pages like, is it canceled or what? I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of looking like that, but we don't know, you know. Nobody knows. I feel bad cuz I was talking to uh, Deborah Estelle, uh Phillips the Yellow Time Force Ranger. Oh yeah, and, yes. And and she was like joking and we were talking about like, you know, she was saying like how that there's always been one, you know, black African American person on the team. And I was like, letting her know like there's two in the last team, right? So yeah. she was like, Oh, right, progress. She's like, Are we doing good? Like, is there gonna be a yellow time force ranger figure? And I'm just there like Oh, oh. like I don't want to uh. tell you you got like totally skipped and not happening, right? Yeah. And I was just like, you know, I think there's a lot of questions up in the air. And I think there's a lot of people, you know, a lot of denial too of like yeah, you know, and I, I wasn't denial too. I didn't want it to end. You know what I mean? I was, you know, especially when Josh, you know, threw all that down, kind of, you know, abruptly. You know what I mean? But there's really no way other to report it, right? But right, um, it just kind of like it sucks. You know, we we went 30 years of not skipping a year of always having. If there wasn't a show on one year, there was definitely toys in the store. You know what I mean? Like that's true though. There was always yeah. something. You know what I mean? And this is we're coming up on the first year of like nothing really real scarce you know what i mean real scarce now we're getting some little things right like we got three zero stuff and stuff yeah, like that just... but like it's it's not like easily accessible as it was before right i i had a feeling it was kind of going downhill when they went to that plastic free packaging i just kind of yeah. saw it i kind of saw it just disappearing for at that point Funny how much it changed when that ceo passed away original one oh, or yeah. the one that we had well, not the original but the one that we had with Power Rangers got adopted yep. um and then that new one came in and just like i don't know man he just just like how can i burn this down you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. oh my God. Felt like. yeah he, i felt like he was the joker in that scene he's like you want to see a magic trick <laughs> <laughs> well, some people just like chaos yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. controlled chaos Hell, right. I mean, Hasbro has a whole building that's empty now because they like let go of everybody in there. Yeah, and that was remember those warehouse sales they were having. That was because yeah, they wanted to empty that building. That's really that's what it was. What it was. Like, that's their whole. Remember, we're bringing, we're unlocking the vaults for Haslabs. That Everyone makes so like, much sense. And I was like, oh crap, they're gonna like have Sentinels. Like, we're gonna be cool. And it was like five things, dude. Like that was it. It was yeah. just it was just clearing a shelf. That's all it was. <laughs> Now that you say that, that makes so much sense. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, "Hey, we found like ten Haslabs in here, and we need this shelf." So uh, yeah, let's, yeah. let's make a whole thing about it. It was so yeah. dumb. Dude. 
It was so yeah. <laughs> I, I heard about that. Like people were just complaining so hard. Dude, I was like, if there's a sentinel that comes up, I think it'd be really hard for me to pass up a sentinel again. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. So I was like, and I was like, and it comes up, and there was like two, like one of the GI Joe things, and then like two. It was like probably literally two uh, Ghostbusters uh, plasma packs, uh, and then like, and what was yeah. it? It was some like one thing that had a bunch of like the game that they had that got through or something like Hero Quest or something. Oh yeah, yeah, something, yeah it was something weird. Yeah. And sure Nobody enough, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always see them posting about like the game boards and stuff. I was like, people real st- people still play board games. <laughs> oh yeah, they definitely do. I mean, they just put up the Power Rangers one up there on Hasbro Pulse. Oh, oh, I didn't even see that one. Okay, yeah, they, they oh, the yeah. Heroes of the Grid one. They put that up. That's right. Okay. Well, day. All right. Well, I think I've held you long enough here. It's been an hour. Yeah. So. uh Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Zero to Hero, and uh, thank you, Daniel, for for honorary co-hosting this episode. Jimmy, and, uh, I miss you, Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> well, they call him. They call him Jim. Jimothy. Jimothy. They call him Jimothy. Jimothy. <laughs> Jimothy. So, yeah, if you ever see him, just call him Jimothy, and uh, hope he retains his title as he's out with yeah. air quotes COVID. Well, we'll, we'll tell him we'll have a game of hide and seek at Nostalgia Con. Do it. I could totally see him just standing in the corner with like some random mascot head on and just like, I know it's you. Yeah, me and Billy are going to be like, I, for, he's gone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Daniel, come on, let's go get nachos. Just, <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, thanks again for joining tonight. I know it was uh, hard not to laugh in your condition. So <laughs> it's all good. Man. Thanks for thanks for braving it out with us. I so, appreciate uh, it. it was, I love fun. I love fun. Yeah, definitely. Uh, pl- plug your channel so our listeners can follow you as well. Yeah, they can find me um, at the Legacy of Nerd everywhere. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. And I actually just uh, I've been focusing a little bit more on my Spotify. So uh, trying mm-hmm. to up my podcast numbers because everyone says like you have a podcast, right? And I have to explain like I really didn't have a podcast, so I just like opened one because it's so it make more sense, right? So yeah, yeah right. if you follow me on Spotify as well, um, um, if you're in the San Antonio or the San Antonio, Texas area, I will be at many events here in San Antonio and Houston, maybe Austin. We'll see. And but um, follow me if you want to hang out, visit me at one of those. I always have like stickers on me to give out. So oh yeah, come up to me, get a free sticker. I got a new batch too. So Billy, when next time I see you, I got a new sticker for you as well. So um, yeah, no just. Um, come and uh, introduce yourself. I know a lot of people feel weird about introducing themselves to me, but I like to meet new people. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Well, hey, yeah. If you ever want to follow us, we are Zio to Hero all across the board, of, across all our socials, Facebook, and everything. Uh, I'm trying to push for more uh, subscribing, liking, and leaving comments and ratings. And I've now got to where, like, I will cry reading a rating now. So <laughs> if, it's, if it's one star, five star, I don't care. I'll cry either way. So <laughs> trying so to get a any re- get any interaction is good interaction, right? Exactly. There you go. So yeah, the, definitely. Thanks for uh, stopping by tonight, and thanks for listening to this episode. We will catch you next week. Hopefully, Jimmy's back next week. If not, we'll burn it all like like that dog <laughs> on fire. Like this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Hasbro's office right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, everyone. See you next week. Thanks, guys. Do you want to be a hero, but you're not? Do you want to be a Jiro or a Kojiro, but you can't because you're not Japanese? Have you considered Zio to hero? Remember, heroes come and go. Idiots. <laughs> Jimbley! Jimbley! This is the Zio to Hero Podcast.